Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at Cisco Snort IPS, Intrusion Prevention System. We'll be discussing IPS service options, next generation IPSs, Snort IPS, Snort Component Rules, ISR Container Applications, Snort IPS Rule Alarms, Snort IPS Rule Actions, Snort IPS header rule options, and finally, we'll look at Snort IPS operation. This episode is part of my series on network security. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Organizations now have three options available to provide intrusion prevention systems. The first here is the Cisco Firepower Next Generation IPS, or known as NGIPS, Next Generation IPS. These are dedicated inline threat prevention appliances, and they provide industry-leading effectiveness against both known and unknown threats. The second here is the Cisco Snort IPS. This is an IPS service that can be enabled on a second generation integrated service router like the ISR 4000s. And the third one here is an external Snort IPS server. Now this is similar to the Cisco Snort IPS solution, but it requires a promiscuous uh, Cisco span switch port and an, exter and an external Snort IDS IPS server. The next generation IPSs, they are dedicated intrusion prevention system appliances. They are built on uh, the core of open technology of Snort and they use vulnerability focused intrusion prevention system rules and embedded IP URL and DNS based security intelligence. And this is all well, provided by the Cisco's Talus Security Intelligence and Resource Group. Now, next generation IPSs, they include here, IPS rules to identify and block network traffic that target network vulnerabilities. They also here, tightly integrate defense against advanced malware incorporating advanced analysis of network and endpoint activity. We also have sandboxing technology that uses hundreds of behavioral indicators to identify zero day and evasive attacks. Now, this also includes application visibility and control or AVC, the Cisco advanced malware protection, also known as AMP for networks, and then finally URL filtering. Snort is an open source IPS that performs real-time real traffic analysis and generates alerts when threats are detected on IP networks. It can also perform protocol analysis, content searching or matching, and detect a variety of attacks and probes such as buffer overflows, stealth and stealth sports, stealth port scans. Now, the Snort IPS on the 4000 series ISRs they include intrusion detection systems and IPS modes. They have three different signature levels. They, they have an allowed list. They have your health monitoring. They also have fail open and fail close, server updates, and a very effective event logging system. The Snort IPS for 4000 series integrated services routers consist of two components, the Snort engine and the Snort rule software subscription. Now the Snort engine here, this is the IPS detection and enforcement engine that is included in the SCS, the SEC license for your 4000 series routers. The Snort rule software subscriptions for signature updates this is the Snort rule set to keep current with the latest threat protection for term-based subscriptions available for one to three years. So you have to have the engine, which comes with the Cisco IOS, and then you have to get the second part, the Snort rule software subscription, which is you have to buy either for one or three years. Now, to address the rapidly evolving threat landscape, it's important to ensure that signatures are up to date as possible. 
there are two types of term-based subscriptions here. One is the community rule set and the other is the subscriber rule set. The community rule set here, this is available for free. The rules that are provided offer lim limited coverage against threats. The community rule set focuses on reactive responses to security threats versus the proactive research work. Yeah, there is a 30 day delay access to updated signatures, meaning that the newest rule will be a minimum of 30 days old. In addition, there is no Cisco customer support available for the community rule set. The second type here is your subscriber rule set. This is available for a fee. This service provides the best protection against threats. It includes coverage of advanced of exploits by using the research work of the Cisco Talus security experts. Also, the subscriber rule set provides the fastest access to updated signatures in response to a security incident or proactive discovery of that new threat. This subscription is fully supported by Cisco. Routers were initially packet processing devices. Routers have acquired so much processing power that server applications can now be hosted inside the router using service containers. Service containers here are virtual machines on routers. Now, applications such as Snort IPS can be uploaded and hosted on these routers. Service containers are supported by most iOS XE based devices. Now the iOS XE is based on the Linux arch architecture and it support, supports virtual machine hosting. Now the Snort engine runs as a Linux service container here and it's an application that can be run on your Cisco I ISR 4000. It provides, now this Cisco 4000 here, it provides dedicated computing resources that run independently of the data plane CPU load. It also makes it easier for the Snort engine to be regularly updated. If you like this episode on Cisco Snort IPS and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. You can visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. In Snort IPS, signatures are configured using rules. These rules serve as the signature alarms by comparing incoming traffic to the Snort rules. Traffic matching a rule here. So, Traffic matching a rule header generates an, an action. The rule header is conceptually similar to an access control list statement. Think about your access control entries, your ACEs. It is a one line statement that identifies malicious traffic. Here's the basic syntax of your command. First part here is we have our action. So we're gonna tell Snort what to do with it. So we're gonna create an alert. Then we say, what protocol are we using? IP, TCP, UDP, ICMP, all types of our traffic. Our source IP address. This is that source address variable or the literal IP address. So you can set up set it up as a variable right here. This is a variable, so that starts by the dollar sign or you could put in that address in there, 192.168.10.10. Then you tell it the source ports. This is layer four source ports right here. So. Once again, this is layer four, HTTP is port 80 would be the example here. So you tell it what the source port is. Then you have the direction indicator. This is our direction indicator. This indicates the direction of the traffic of the rule. Is it incoming? Is it outgoing? Now, if you use this, the less than sign with the greater than sign, this is a bi-directional symbol here. And this indicates port address pairs in either source or the destination. Then we have the destination IP address. Once again, it can be a variable or the literal IP address and then the destination port. And this here, once again, is your layer four port number. We can also use keywords in here. So right here it says any. 
So that represents any port on our layer four. Snort can be enabled in IDS mode or IPS mode, intrusion detection system mode, intrusion prevention system mode. Now the snort intrusion detection system mode can perform three actions. It can alert. And so we can generate an alert here using the selected alert method and then log that packet. Log is logging our packet. So we can either generate an alert, we can log it, or we can pass. We can basically ignore that packet. Snort IPS mode can perform all of the IDS actions Plus, it can also drop here, which is block and log the packet. It can do, we can have it reject it, meaning it's going to block the packet. It's going to log it, and then it's going to send the TCP reset if the protocol is TCP or an ICM port unreachable message if the protocol is UDP. Or we can do an S drop here. And this is block the packet, but don't log it. So just block it, delete it, and don't log it. Snort rule header also contains rule options, also known as fields, to provide additional information for that rule. Now, options are separated by semicolons, and the rule option keywords are separated from their arguments by using colons. So you can have multiple options, and then the options are separated from their keywords by using colons. Here are some of the common general rule and the detection rule options for a sample rule header. First one here is message. And this is a simple text string that provides a meaningful message to output when the rule matches. Next one would be flow. What flow does is it specifies the direction of the network traffic. Next one is content. A detection rule option here that allows the user to set rules that search for specific content in the packet payload and trigger response based on that data. Now, the option data can contain mixed text and binary data. Then we have the distance or offset here. This is a detection rule keyword that allows the rule writer to specify where to start searching relative to the beginning of the payload or the beginning of the content matched. Then we have within or depth here. This is a detection rule keyword that allows the rule writer to specify how far forward to search relative to the end of the previous content match. Now, once that command match is found, how far is searched for it? Then we have PCRE. This is a detection rule keyword that allows rules to be written using Perl compatible regular expressions. PCRE, Perl compatible regular expressions, which allows for more complex matches. Next is byte test. And this is a detection rule keyword that allows a rule to test a number of bytes against a specific value in binary. Then we have metadata. Metadata allows a rule writer to embed additional information about the rule. So it allows you to put more information in there about your rule, sort of like more comments. Then we have reference. Reference allows the rule to include references to external sources of information. And so if you have a hyperlink you wanna put in there, you could put that there. Then we have class type. For class type, it identifies the potential effect of what is successful attack would be. And then finally, we have SID or REV. The SID is a unique identifier for each rule, making them easy to identify. It should be used with the REV or revision keyword. Packets arriving on Snort enabled interfaces are inspected. First thing here is the Cisco iOS software forwards the packets to be inspected to the Snort IPS engine using the internal virtual group VGP interface. The second thing here is the Snort IPS inspects the traffic and then takes that necessary action. The third thing here is the Snort drops the packets associated with bad flows. This is in IPS mode. Now, the thing to know about this is also good flow packets are then returned to the router for further processing. 
your routing protocol, which phase to, or which interface to get to its destination. Packet exchange between the container applications and the iOS data plan is done using VPG interfaces, virtual port group interfaces. These routed interfaces are connected through the router backplane. The corresponding interface on the container side will appear as a virtual ethernet port. NORT requires two virtual port group interfaces. The first one they require here is the management interface. This is the interface that is used to source logs to the log collector and for retrieving signature updates from cisco.com. For this reason, this interface requires a routable IP address. The second interface is the data interface. This is the interface that is used to send user traffic between the snort virtual container and the router, the router forwarding planes. Here, VPG0 on our 4000 series router, this is used for the snort management traffic while VPG1 here, VPG1 is used for user traffic to be inspected. User traffic to be inspected is forwarded to the Snort engine using that VPG1 interface. Traffic is then inspected. So we send traffic to the Snort using VPG1 and then traffic is then inspected and then is either rejected, dropped, deleted, or it's forwarded back to the router to be routed correctly. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on Cisco Snort IPS. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on network security. In the bottom right is one of my favorite episodes that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode on my series of network security. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.